Um, good morning, everyone. I am Leandro, and I'll be talking about EasyY and Elevate today. Um, just a minute. There you go. Uh, EasyY and uh, Elevate are based on the EFL, or Enlightenment Foundation Libraries. Uh, I'm not sure if, you, if you're familiar with the Enlightenment project, but it was it used to be a very, very common um, when a manager uh, 12 years ago. Uh, it went through a very large he write, and one of the byproducts of these he write was the, these set of libraries. Uh, they do lots of things. Uh, hmm. This doesn't work. Oh, there you go. Uh, but lots of things, including Canvas Library called Evas Edge, which is a layout library. Uh, Ecore, uh, we have a main loop and utilities. Aina, which is uh, our data structure libraries, and other libraries as well. So we do have lots of libraries that uh, are quite difficult to use because it's very large amount of libraries, but they offer a lot of things. Uh, so, and but they are quite, down, quite daunting for for people that never uh, worked with these before because they do some things quite differently from uh, the norm. So, yeah, I have to say here. So, okay, so easy why easy why uh, came to help um, diminish that. Um, Letter soup um, and make things easier. So, uh, so for instance, have here uh, your application on a stack diagram. You see, there is uh, how things fit together. So, have your application, have elementary, which is our widget set, have edge, which is our layout library, emotion, which is a media playback library, uh, EIO, which offers a synchronous IO, EDBus, which is a DBus uh, interface. I have eCore, Embryo, uh, which is a programming language used uh, together with Edge. I have Eat, which is data serialization and deserialization library. I have Evis, which is Canvas. And of course, I have Aina, which is data structure library. Uh, as you can see, these are a lot of libraries. Uh, I have actually more of these. I've, I've simplified a diagram. Uh, so for a new developer, this is um, quite difficult to, um, to work with. So we decided to create uh, something that would uh, make the this, this stack smaller uh, and easier to use, because um, these libraries are actually separate libraries, and they had to expose some internal uh, um, state and uh, things like that, because they should have, uh, we need to talk with each other. Um, this isn't much the case these days, because they now share, share the same build system. But APIs remain because, well, you don't want to break APIs. So we wanted to create something different. Uh, for, so we created for EasyWay, which is a framework that sits on top of elementary um, and abstra abstracts the whole stack. So your application will look like this. Your stack will look like this, which is a lot easier to grasp. Uh, but another thing that's very important is C is a very nice language. I like C. It's actually one of my favorite languages, but it's not very expressive, um, um, especially if you're trying to work with uh, some applications that depends on parsing a lot of data or uh, things like that. And, and so we chose JavaScript. Uh, we were using V8, which uh, offers a very good performance uh, and is very e uh, easy to work with at a C++ level. Um, so now you have a stack that's like this. Uh, it's a pretty small stack. Um, of course, blocks are expand to other things, but uh, the application developer doesn't, doesn't need to see everything else. So uh, how does it work? Uh, it basically divides the application into two uh, things. So have a data and behavior. In other words, have a model and controller. Um, of course, it uh, looks like MVC. Uh, and the view is implemented by EasyY, so you don't have to implement uh, most of the boring details of the view things. So uh, we did that because we believe uh, less is more. 
So uh, though it's less flexible, you do have less products to solve, you have uh, less code to type, less bugs to hunt, and uh, being less, uh, we all know that flexibility is a two-edged sword. So although you can do whatever you want if you're very flexible, um, you end up with that letter soup uh, that actually makes uh, uh, you, you, you um, take too much time to learn how to use our tools. Um, so um, we've observed some patterns that we've seen on mobile, mobile uh, uh, applications. Uh, so we've made uh, the framework work uh, well with these patterns. Um, so we did that by writing boring code, so don't have to do that. Perhaps just a little, of course, uh, but there is no silver bullet. But most of boring code, we wrote it for you. So, okay, again, uh, you have less code, have less bugs, and have more time for serious business, like browsing Reddit or something. And speaking of Reddit, uh, let's write a client for it right now. So, uh, here's a plan. Here's the mock-up of user interface. It's pretty simple. You have, uh, here on top, have a bar of the refresh button, and then a list of whatever items there are in the this uh, slash r slash funny subreddit. Whenever you click an item, you just download uh, and show you whatever item it is. It's a very simple application, just show screens, very, very, very small, but you have network access, you have a web browser, you have uh, lots of things um, going on here. So, okay, how, how do you start? Uh, we decided, we, I'd start with the model. Uh, so, for instance, uh, Reddit offers a JSON file, uh, for those who don't know, uh, JSON is JavaScript Object Notation. It's a way to serialize uh, data in less brain dead way than XML. So you fiddle with it, find the structure, and then write the model. Model is this thing here, it's pretty small. So um, you have the init function. It's pretty much like uh, Python's init method. Uh, it's basically a class initialization method. Um, so I, I create uh, a items list and then call the refresh, re refresh method. The refresh method is basically just a call to ajax.get. It's a model we wrote that um, <clears throat> works with IHTP requests and does a lot of things, including caching and throttling and a bunch of other things. And what this call is actually doing is uh, requesting that uh, document we saw, saw earlier on the common line and whenever that happens, uh, whenever a response uh, is received, uh, we just call this call back here and parse the JSON and notify the controllers. That's pretty much about it. And of course, have uh, these all two functions that uh, return the size of uh, the amount of items we have and return uh, the index uh, item uh, in our <coughs> model. And that's it for the model. It's very simple, very small. So another controller, um, as you saw earlier, uh, it's a list. So we derive from list controller. We use that model we wrote five minutes ago uh, and write a, a item and index function. This uh, access the model, obtains the item, and returns an object that says, OK, the text for this item is uh, um, the title for that, that uh, item. Uh, the, the index item in, in model. Uh, this uh, title thing came from JSON. It's been parsed by by JSON module. Um, so whenever you select an item, this thing is is uh, called uh, select item and index. Uh, what we basically do is uh, we obtain the the item itself, and then we push uh, on top uh, of your screen a uh, web browser with that item's URL. Uh, and of course, you'd have a refresh button. You just say that in the navigation bar, I uh, have the refresh button on the right. And whenever you click that item, you just re refresh the model. And that's it for the controller. Now I'll just write 200 pages of XML, because everybody loves XML. Just kidding. Uh, so uh, basically, your application is like this. OK. Uh, you import the like, user libraries, uh, the things you wrote. Uh, five minutes ago, and then you just start the application. So uh, it should just work. So 
You don't need to call now, okay? Please wait because there, there's more. Uh, if you remember this, uh, this is not a whole picture. Um, uh, easy way is written in JavaScript, and we need a way to uh, talk with the Enlightenment Foundation libraries. So we have uh, Elevate, which you'll get if you call in the next 15 minutes. So Elevate is here um, on top of V8 and uh, below Easy Y. So, um, so it bridges uh, uh, EFL and, and V8. Um, it will still play with Legos, right? Uh, but instead of you using Duplo, so it's a lot easier and, uh, to, to use. For instance, here's an example. Let's create a Hello World screen uh, window. Um, so basically, we load an elementary library. Again, it's a rigid library. We uh, realize uh, a window object. Um, the elementary library, uh, we made it in a way that's uh, always declarative. So uh, objects are not created on screen as we realize them. Uh, so we declare all the, the parameters, the title, width, height, and things like that. And of course, the elements themselves. So first some have background, which is just a background element. Uh, in this case, is a red uh, background. And a, a label with a text pants on. So you have also EIO, uh, which offers uh, synchronous I.O. Uh, it's not, everything's not, not everything's there. Um, right now, it's only, we only support file listing. So it looks like this. So you basically list files, uh, beginning with uh, files in our home directory. And for each batch of files, um, it's, uh, we, we use batches because th this way you can few other things in another thread, and every, I don't know, five, I don't know, half a second or so, you send a batch of uh, files for you to work with. Um, so this callback is called whenever a batch is ready. Uh, then it can send a set, uh, set of uh, um, parameters. So you can say if it's a recursive, or amount of time you have to wait between batches, and the filters uh, which run on a library thread so your application will not hang. Uh, have Ecoracon as well. Ecoracon offers HTTP connections and a bunch of other things. Uh, the AJAX, mo AJAX module we have used is a limited wrap around it. Um, offers um, basically get and post HTTP methods, and that's it. I uh, have DBus as well. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the API is pretty much like Python DBus. Uh, it's basically the same API, so uh, which is a, actually a very simple API to use. Uh, also, some Node.js modules are uh, compatible as well. So, JavaScript modules are 100% compatible, and native modules are a mixed bag because some of them relies on uh, different main loop implementations and such. Um, sometimes you can uh, make it compatible, sometimes you can't. Not without some lots of work, but it is somewhat compatible with native modules. Uh, so if you haven't already, um, uh, EasyY and Elevate are in our prototype uh, sub-repository on uh, sub our subvision server. Um, you can check it out. Um, and, well, that's all. I, I actually wanted to give a demo, but for some reason, I couldn't get it running on this new machine here. Um, I didn't have time to do that. So things are not working properly, so it's not demo uh, ready. So, OK. Anyone have any questions or anything? Um, microphones. Have a mic? I think it's a pretty small group. Um, OK, yes. Do you, uh, do you, what is, uh, can you give me an idea of the footprint, the memory footprint of the whole stack? Because it seems like, although this is a nice little wrapper, mm -hmm. there's still a whole large stack below it. Um, well, OK, he asked about memory footprint. Um, I would say I, I have no idea how much it uses. Um, uh, EFL itself is quite light. Uh, we've used it in very uh, memory cramped devices like very, very uh, slow arm socks, 
with 128 megabytes of RAM and it worked perfectly. Uh, but I've never uh, run, <clears throat> actually checked the amount of memory that uh, the wrapper uses. But it's not really, I, I don't believe that would be really much. Yeah. Any other questions? There's more over there. Uh, I work on an embedded device that's mm -hmm. uh, currently running GTK Plus on top of X for our app. If just for the sake of discussion, we wanted to be able to run some small app with easy UI, mm -hmm. what components need to be installed on a, on, a, on a device in order to use this? Okay, well, uh, you basically need the DFL, basically. You need Canvas, you need the Ecore, Aina, I mean, the whole stack. Uh, you can, of course, if you, you don't need certain features like uh, you don't need media playback, for instance, you need to install that thing, but um, and, and install V8, and then uh, EasyWay itself is just uh, it's a small JavaScript file. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not much thing. So. Uh, it can run on top of X11. Uh, Eva supports uh, various uh, front ends, so you can use Direct FB, you can run uh, X, or, well, even Windows works. So, oh, PS3, I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty portable. So, any other questions? No? Yes. Okay, uh, so if you have any more questions, uh, I'll be around or can just send them an email. Thank you very much.